Now, I've got to tell you, you could have won money on this bet. That in the Republican presidential field, Thaddeus McCotter, the congressman from Michigan, would still be in it when Minnesota's former governor, Tim Pawlenty, was not. And he is. Pawlenty's out. Pulled out over the weekend. Thaddeus McCotter's still in. Joining us this morning. How are you? How are you, Frank? Good. All you, all you need is about six more people to uh, drop by the wayside, pass them all here along the way as you as you uh, continue to gain support. Looks like you picked up a little of attention in Iowa, even though you weren't in on the debate yet. Yeah, I think not being in the debate was very disappointing. But in the end, you know, we play through pain. you got to do what you can do with your opportunities. The key thing for our campaign coming out of the straw poll debate was the invitations by people in Iowa to come speak to their Republican groups. Because, as you know, it's a caucus state, and you got to get in front of people. So I think that that's continuing to build out uh, the fledgling campaign. What is the importance of the straw poll vote uh, in Ames over the weekend, where 16,000 or so people cast a ballot and the national media uh, has, has tongues wagging about all of the importance that uh, that's attendant to it? Well, I think it's an important event in the sense that it shows tests of organizations for campaigns that have been up and running. It provides an opportunity, which I was grateful for, uh, for fledgling campaigns to come out and try to generate some traction. But as you've seen from the results, you've also had instances where the two of the three front runners now uh, did not participate in the straw poll. And so for the future, it's going to be increasingly viewed as a determination by front runners as to whether or not it's a whole lot of risk without a whole lot of reward. Yeah. You know, I've got to tell you, I love the one answer you gave to someone, I think it was in Iowa, when they said, what niche do you fill in the race? Oh, yeah, I'm not trying to fill a niche, I'm trying to be president of the United States. And I don't think anybody who fills a niche is going to be able to deal with the comprehensive issues that are out there. So after the uh, the, the first test here uh, in Ames, uh, we see national stories about the race. Uh, you were telling me uh, off air that National Review has already declared its its Perry against Romney. USA Today has got uh, Bachman Perry Romney as uh, the threesome and uh, says it's a three horse race. What do you say here? Well, it was National Journal. Actually. National Journal. I'm sorry. National Journal. Well, I think that it's still very early. In 2007, McCain finished 10th, and he wound up being the nominee. So what you're continuing to see is the press has their three that they want to continue to push out there. But you still have people in the race that are very determined. You have people like Santorum, Rick's very determined, Herman Cain, others. And you have a lot of the electorate that's looking, especially in the Republican Party, for something different, something new. And so we'll continue to see, I think, the volatile volatility of this race continue, no matter how much certainty people would like to bring to it. <laughs> As you know, Frank, we live in an age of Twitter and Facebook and social networking where one gaffe can eliminate a candidate. Well, exactly. Did, did Rick Perry's uh, official announcement change anything uh, in, in the race, as far as you're concerned? Well, two things. One, no longer can they say I'm the last entrant into the race. <laughs> 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 That's one. Uh, number two, I think it, I think it's helpful, as I've always said, that people want to hear more voices and more candidates. So, I think that his entry into the race is going to generate some interest, and I think it provides an opportunity for Republicans to have a chance to see uh, more candidates. Michelle Bachman winning over the weekend. What did that mean? Well, I think it was, you know, and I said it at the time. I congratulate both my House colleagues, both Michelle and Ron Paul, on their one-two finish there. I think that it shows that there's an intensity amongst the grassroots, and it shows the ability of people, as you know, who said that House members can't do well. I think that clearly refutes that argument. Well, they said senators couldn't either until Barack Obama won the presidency. Well, against Senator John McCain. Right, exactly. Two senators running. Good point. Uh, now, as, as we move forward, what what's the uh, next uh, key milestone for you here? I mean, uh, you, you want to get into one of the debates, I take it, correct? Yes. But our, but our key now is to continue to work grassroots in Iowa, because, again, it's a caucus state, and it's designed for that. And then to go to New Hampshire, which, although an open primary, is still only two congressional districts, and the voters expect you to come see them in person. So there'll be a lot of grinding it out. It's a very, in many ways, it's a very uh, Detroit type of campaign where you grind it out and try to build your results as you go. I, 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 what about fundraising? How difficult has that been for you? Well, it's always going to be difficult, but what you have to do is not is be very frugal in your efforts. 
And again, because of the nature of the caucus and because of the nature of the open primary in Hampshire, because of the size of the state, it's critical to get in front of voters and driving in a car getting in front of voters, especially if they ask you, this is what happened after Iowa for me, is the real key. So you, you take that as the, the best sign of all, that people come up and say, hey, please come back, speak at our event, we want to hear more from you. Yes, and I think that that was the one thing that we really, really needed to come out of Iowa was to make an impact in Iowa. At that point in time, as you know, Frank, the presidency is not determined by a national primary where everybody votes on the same day. It's a relatively uh, grassroots or organizational test as you go on toward the caucuses in Iowa and then towards the open primary in New Hampshire. Yeah, and it's momentum. Momentum is yes. huge in this. Yes, and again, with the volatility of the electorate and the Republicans still looking for something new, uh, there's still the opportunity for that to occur. And if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. But it's, for me, sitting in August, it's far too early to determine whether it'll happen or not. Uh, you, now, you mentioned driving your car around states like New Hampshire and Iowa. What, what's the most, uh, give me some other ideas of frugality that you have uh, exhibited. <laughs> Well, probably the best one was the fact that uh, next door to me in the in, in my colleague Michelle Bachman's tent, you had Randy Travis, and on our stage you had me and my brother in our band. Pretty frugal. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty frugal. <laughs> yeah, but she didn't have to pay for him to be there. I bet he volunteered. Well, I, I don't know if you had to cover the expenses. <laughs> <laughs> are, are you are you eating well? Me? Yeah. No, I never do. <laughs> well, are you going to a lot of fast food places? I I, I can only imagine what campaigning is like. It's got to it's got to be tough. Yeah, I, I find I do find that I, I I eat like once a day, and I wind up eating stuff that I ordinarily wouldn't eat at home, and that does take a bit of a toll on the intestinal tract. But it's part of a sacrifice that has to be made. Like what what do you eat that you wouldn't eat at home? Well, I generally eat uh, a lot of onion rings, Burger King, Hardee's, that type of fast food. I don't eat that at home. Gotcha, gotcha. I, th- I thought you were going to say corn dogs or something there. And I well, there, there, there were pork chop, pork chops on a stick. There was fried butter uh, at the state fair. It is amazing the things that can be deep fried. <laughs> fried butter? Fried butter, yeah. What Now, what's the point of that? Uh, it's <laughs> Iowa. <laughs> hey, be, ca- <laughs> be careful what you say. That's Iowa. That could be used against you now. Oh, they're quite, they're quite good. It's a state fair. It's a delicacy at the state fair. They also, I saw the butter cow that they make. They have statues out of butter, which are very similar to what we do with ice here in the Plymouth Ice Festival in the district. And the, the artisans that do that, it's amazing. And I asked somebody, I said, well, you know, how many tabs of butter is that? And they, they didn't know. And I said, well, it's probably for the best because, you know, your doctor who would have to give you the angioplasty would faint. <laughs> the butter cow. Yeah, butter I, hope you, cow. I hope you got pictures of that. A hundred years of the butter cow. I'll see you later. Thanks for the time. Good luck out there as you get back on the trail in New Hampshire and Iowa, Congressman. Thanks, Frank. Bye. Take care, Congressman Thaddeus McCotter. Uh, with updates on the butter cow and more here on the Beckman Show.